Hello students, today we are going to study chapter number 11 of English literature and the name of the chapter is in the Bazaars of Hyderabad which is a poem and this poem is written by Sarojini Naidu. Now students before you is one such postal stamp which is uh, dedicated to Sarojini Naidu and uh, it was uh, of 15 naya pesa or new pesa it's written in n small and p for pesa is written in capital so it's naya pesa now naya pesa is not utilized or used in nowadays students now students uh, Sarojini Naidu was uh, born in on uh, 13th of February 1879 in Hyderabad and uh, it was uh, a British part of India and it was not just a Hyderabad city but rather Hyderabad state and nowadays as uh, Hyderabad uh, is no more a state now it is part of Telangana state in India students and uh, at that time Sarojini Naidu was known as Sarojini Chattopadhyay it was uh, Sarojini Naidu ji was only known as Sarojini Naidu after the marriage students now students uh, Sarojini Naidu died in second on 2nd of March 1949 at the age of 70 in Lucknow and uh, the name of the state is United Provinces. Now you might be thinking students uh, which uh, state is this which is present in India and we do not know this name. Students the United Provinces is the name the old name of the state Uttar Pradesh students uh, let me tell you that she was also the first governor of United Provinces or Uttar Pradesh and uh, she was in the office uh, as a governor from 15th of August 1947 to 2nd of March 1949 and later on uh, she was succeeded uh, by Hormashi Perosha Modi and she also became the president of Indian National Congress between 1925 till 1926 and uh, she was preceded by Mahatma Gandhi earlier Mahatma Gandhi was the president of the Indian National Congress before Sarojini Naidu and later on after uh, she left the post of the president of Indian National Congress. She was succeeded further succeeded by S. Srinivasa Ayangar. Now study, uh, students will know more about the city of Hyderabad. This is a picture to show you that this is uh, how it looks like and now let's more know more about the city of Hyderabad. Now students, the city of Hyderabad had a mixed culture, had and has, still has it, a mixed culture of Hindus and the Islamic culture over there. The goods sold by the bazaar vendors, that is the merchants, vendors, maidens, peddlers, goldsmiths, fruit men, musicians, flower girls, they all cater to the needs of every segment and faith of the society. Now students, the poet provides a panoramic view, a big view of the colors, sounds, smell and sights of an Indian bazaar. She has also used vibrant rhymes to describe the magnificence 
of the bazaars and also the products that are sold in these bazaar stores. While talking of the poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad student, it is a 19th century English poem written by Sarojini Naiduji. And uh, she, let me tell you students that she was also known as the Nightingale of India. And an Indian independence activist, and she was also a poet from Hyderabad. Now, the poem is generally written in five stanzas and was first published in the year 1912 from London in the form of a book. And the name of the book was The Bird of Time. And with her, other series of poems too were also in this part of the book. While reviewing the poem, the New York Times wrote in April 1913 edition that in the bazaars of Hyderabad shines like an oriental gem. Now in the poem, Naidu described the beauty of a traditional Hyderabad bazaars and she presented the lively pictorial scenes of merchants, vendors, peddlers, goldsmiths, fruit men, and flower girls selling their goods, all of whom similarly answers the questions of purchasers who buy their articles and after a detailed bargain, bargaining students. Students, the poem also describes the musical, I beg your pardon students, musical instruments being used by the musicians and magicians displaying their magical tricks to attract the crowd present in the bazaar. Now let's read this particular poem and understand this poem students. The first stanza says, What do you sell, O ye merchants? Richly your wares are displayed, turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade, mirrors with panels of amber, daggers with handles of jade. Now students, the poetess is asking the question over here. As a curious onlooker, and uh, the author or the poetess over here, she marvels at the wide variety of different items offered for sale over here in the market. As we come to know, the different things over here, like turbans, tunics, mirrors, daggers all these lovely things students now with eyes gaping with wonder she asked the merchants about the many items they display such as the crimson and the silver colored turbans tunics with purple brocade students now students tunic is a loose garment students and brocade means a woven silk cloth and uh, amber panel mirror students now students amber means yellowish brownish colors mirrors and the dreadful daggers also they were also sold over there in the market the dreadful one a fearful one and uh, these daggers students dagger is not actually a, a kind of a sword but it's a kind of a short sword students it's not a knife and it's not as big as a sword but it's between in size students so these are called as daggers with handles of jade and uh, students let's move to the second stanza students now first let's read this particular stanza what does it say 
it says what do you weigh o ye vendors saffron and lentil and rice what do you grind o ye maidens sandalwood henna and spice what do you call o ye peddlers chessmen and ivory dice now students we need to understand this particular stanza now now students sarojini naidu eyes fall on many of the vendors who just cover the market with their lovely wares present over there and she asked the vendors who sell rice and lentils lentils means students pulses or in hindi we call it as dal and she further asks over here what do you grind o ye maidens maidens students are women that are unmarried or spinsters you can call them so she asked them what do you grind and uh, these maidens in reply they tell sandalwood henna and spice and then the peddlers she asked a question from the peddlers peddlers are the people who move uh, about uh, on foot students and she asked a question from them then uh, what do you call oi peddlers and the answer is chessmen and ivory dice so the people over here the peddlers over here are also the people who are moving they are also selling some items and they are selling items uh, for the chess board chessmen and ivory dice students now let's move to stanza number 3 students now stanza number 3 students says what do you make o ye goldsmith wristlets and anklet and ring bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as a dragonfly's wing girdles of gold for dancers scabbards of gold for the king now students let's understand this part and this stanza of the poem students now students here the author or the poetess sarojini naidu casts her glance or sees towards the famed goldsmiths over here and uh, who with their deft hands good hands trained hands make wristlets that are worn on the wrists anklets and ring no students ultra violet bells for the pigeons as it's written over here bells for the feet of the blue pigeons so ultra violet bells for the pigeons pigeons legs means students it means girdles for dancers legs girdles for dancers legs students now girdles is bell students girdles of gold and they are of gold and uh, the dancers legs and ceremonial swords for the royalty so even the royal people they are having things from the market and they are saying scabbards as it's written over here scabbards of gold for the king scabbard means student sheath for the sword sheath is that particular piece in which you keep back the sword when there is no work of the sword undoubtedly the skill of these artisans brings appreciation and cheer to the author students 
Now, students, let's move to stanza number four. And it says over here, What do you cry, O ye fruit men? Citron, pomegranate, and plum. What do you play, O musicians, sitar, sarangi, and drum? What do you chant, O magicians, spills, for eons to come? Now, students, let's read this and uh, understand this particular part of the poem students let's understand this stanza number four now here the poet says what do you cry o ye fruit men so students the fruit hawkers who are passing by the author and uh, the author catches the attention towards them and uh, they offer citron pomegranate and plum students. Now, citron in Hindi, you call it as chakotra. It's a bigger in size, somewhat like that of an orange, but it's not an orange, but it's and uh, it's big in size. And pomegranate and plum. Plum is in Hindi, you call it as alu bukhara. Now, students. Moving ahead, then there are the musicians also, students, and she asked the question from them, what do you play, O oh, musicians? And they reply, sitar, sarangi, and drum students. Now, the spelling of sitar, you might be knowing it's S-I-T-A-R. But she has used rather C I T H A R. It's sitar, sarangi, and drum students. So they tell that they are dealing with this work and uh, adding a touch of bemusement to the bustling marketplace. There are magicians also, students, who baffle the onlookers with their tricks and with their magic of their hand and the weird shouts as if they are invoking some kind of heavenly power students now students let's move to the next stanza and understand it students now the next stanza says what do you weave o ye flower girls with tassels of azure and red Crowns for the brow of a bridegroom, chaplets to garland his bed, sheets of white blossoms new garnered to perfume the sleep of the dead. Now, students, in this lastly, in this last stanza, students, we come to know that the flower girls. Uh, seem to have stolen the heart of the author or the poetess over here and they make tassels of azure students now students tassel uh, is a is a tuft of loosely hanging thread or cord which is knotted at one end and attached for decoration to soft furnishings and clothing or other items so with tassels of azure and red azure means bright blue so tassels of bright blue color and red and crowns for the brow of a bridegroom now students decorations it means decorations for a bridegroom's headgear so that, as it's written over here, chaplets to garland his bed also. Chaplets to garland his marital bed. is just not an ordinary bed, but his marital bed. And strings of white blossoms or freshly plucked flowers, which are white in color, 
to add aroma to the bed being carried to the grave, students. Now, students, uh, let's study about the style of the poem, students. Now, in this poem, Sarojini Nadu describes the magnificent things of life along with the common scenes in the bazaars of Hyderabad. The poem is set in the form of conversations that have been done with customers and vendors and Sarojini Nadu has repeatedly asked questions in every stanza about the different things, about the different kind of goods sold in the bazaar. And Sarojini Nadu presents the scene of the music produced by traditional instruments played by the musicians and the chantings of the magicians, the various fruits being sold by the fruit men, the wing of saffron, lentils and rice by the vendors and other depictions of different ways which are sold in the bazaar students. Now the poet is or the poet has used vibrant rhymes to describe the magnificence of the bazaars and the products sold. Now students there are some poetic devices used over here. Now each line if you read of this poem contains a rhythm and a beat and the sequence of the phrases like what do you o ye and they mark the rhyme scheme of the poem the poetess often repeats these phrases to create a musical effect to emphasize a point and to lend unity to the whole poem now the conversation form of the poem that is set in the form of question and answer between vendor and buyer makes the reader feel that they are present in the bazaar to present the pictorial scene of the bazaar Naidu uses rich sensory images and a vibrant sense of touch sound smell sight and taste students now students, there are some themes also and we'll understand what are the themes of this poem. Now folklore is one of the central and chief subjects in this, in this poem of Sarojini Naidu students and it has been the main subject of the different poems also written by Sarojini Naidu. And in this particular poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad, it is associated with one such subject. Now the charm and enthusiasm of a traditional Indian bazaar in the city of Hyderabad are presented in this poem. Now Naidu has enthusiastically described the bazaar with merchants and vendors selling a diverse range of wares. The poet stops over at the galleries arranged by the merchants, traders, hawkers, goldsmiths, fruit, sellers, peddlers, magicians, musicians and flower girls. The poet described the experience of conversation between the seller and the buyer. Here the poet uses the sellers about what they are selling and who in turn answer reply politely also explaining their products. Now students emotional moods are also stirred by the poet when Sarojini Naidu makes the readers feel that the bazaar life is also witnessing both sorrows and joys. Now wedding and festival occasions bring joy in the bazaar's life when people buy jewelry, garlands, fruits and children crowding near magicians and the sorrow and sadness is witnessed when common public kitchens are arranged, when the nobles or soldiers die and when flower girls are seen weaving masses of white flowers to be used for the dead people's grave. Another theme in the poem is the Swadeshi movement students. 
though not much specifically mentioned in the poem, the poem was written during the Indian independence movement. And by this poem, Naidu proves that India is rich in tradition and there is no requirement of foreign product students. And through this poem, students, Naidu encourages the Indians to buy goods from their traditional bazaars and she urges the countrymen to take part in the Swadeshi movement and boycott all foreign good students. I hope you were able to understand what I explained in this video and this video was much more beneficial to you students. Thank you.